Yo, what's going on? So I'm going to keep this one relatively quick. I'm in the middle of seeing patients. Um, But in between seeing patients, a lot of times I think about certain things depending on the conversation that we had. And I've been telling you all how we can relate a lot of things out in the world to your actual body as far as how it works, uh, how things go wrong, and how to optimize certain things. And I've also been telling you how many of these things we're calling diseases are not diseases. They're just merely uh, merely signs and symptoms, and you shouldn't treat them. And so what I want to talk to you right now is about the actual dashboard of your physiology, the dashboard of your body. So let's look at the car. When you look at a vehicle, we all know, when you turn your check engine, when you turn your actual car on, the uh, dashboard lights up. That dashboard is getting feedback from the the whole entire vehicle as a whole moment by moment um you know if the oil oil is low the oil light's going to come on if the spark plugs aren't working the check engine light's going to come on if it's time for a maintenance or a fast or a detox uh your, your maintenance light's going to come on if you're driving and your car slips a little bit your traction light's going to come on if somebody's leaning on an airbag, the airbag light's going to come on. And so that dashboard pretty much knows what's going on with the vehicle as a whole, moment by moment. And anytime something goes wrong with your vehicle, the first thing you look at is the dashboard. You want to know what's going on with the dashboard. Now, in the case of a check engine light, if your check engine light comes on, you understand that the check engine light itself is not the problem. You understand that the check engine light is denoting the fact that you should actually check your engine. You understand that you can take a piece of duct tape and you can place it over the check engine light and that'll calm you down. You won't be able to see it, but you also understand that you didn't do anything really. All you did was just place tape over it. You could also cut the wires to that check engine light, but at the same time, you understand that 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 didn't mean anything because you still don't know what's wrong with the check engine. Um, now most people will actually take the vehicle to a person who understands cars because they want them to actually check the engine. Then the person who checks the engine, they do their diagnostics and they're going to actually tell you that, Hey, it's time for your spark plugs to be changed. That's why your check engine light came on. You're not going to say to them, Oh, I thought my check engine light came on just because my check engine light came on and I need to turn it off. They're going to say, no, the reason your check engine light came on was because X was going on, Y was going on, Z was going on. And so there's always a reason for your check engine light to come on. The same thing with your oil light. When your uh, engine oil has low pressure, high pressure, maybe it's low on oil uh, because you have an oil leak, whatever is going on. But when that oil light comes on, you're not just going to ignore it. Uh, You're not just going to cut the oil light. You're not just going to, well, what a lot of us tend to do, and I, I noticed from experience, we might just put a quart of oil in there until next month, and then that check engine light comes on again. I mean, I'm sorry, that oil light comes on again. And that's fine. You can do that. But you also understand that that oil is going somewhere. Like, there's a reason why every single month your oil is low. So we can you can put oil in it. That's fine. But you adding oil to it doesn't really solve the problem. All you're doing is allowing whatever is causing that oil to be low, you're allowing it to progress. You understand that adding oil to it doesn't really do anything as a whole. It doesn't do anything for the actual health of the car. It may do something in the moment, but even in the moment, it's not solving the problem. Same thing, same thing with your, uh, your, the temperature gauge. If you look at, if you're driving and that t- temperature gauge start to creep across that little, uh, that medium part, that middle part, You understand that something's going on. Now, can you pull over on the side of the road and let it cool off? Yeah, you can do that. Can you turn on the heater to use the heat from the actual engine to cool down the the car? Yeah, you can do that. Um, Can you stop by or can you pull over the side of the road and just add antifreeze to it? Or, uh, I'm sorry, uh, coolant to it or water to it? Yeah, you can do that. But no matter what you do, you understand that you're not really dealing with the reason why the car is overheating in the first place. There's a reason for why that car is overheating in the first place. And just adding fluids to it is only going to pretty much deal with the so-called problem at that moment, but it's not going to do anything for the actual overall health of the car. 
and we can go on and do this on and on and on oil temperature check engine light so forth and so forth but with the vehicle because the actual progression will lead to the vehicle breaking down because we have an associated pain with money coming out of our pocket if that engine was to blow up or if that uh, car was to stop working it now affects our livelihood as far as how we can get the point A to point B uh, how we can get the work how we can get money we feel that in our pocket and so many people usually take action on this they usually take action on their vehicles now let's switch over to the human body so what we have done or what we have allowed to be uh, be done and what the medical system does uh, the health health insurance is all this whole entire system what they do is they will see that check engine light your blood pressure being elevated and say that is a disease so what we need to do is treat it with medications now if you understand what blood pressure is as a whole like what the actual blood pressure is and you understand how important it is for that blood to be delivered to those 37 trillion cells you have you understand that the blood is carrying oxygen nutrients is also carrying back the waste um, the byproducts of the, the metabolism of those uh, nutrients we understand how important it is for blood to be able to get to point a back to point b which would be the actual uh the right the right side of your heart back into the actual lungs so that there can be an exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide and then the whole thing works over again if blood is not able to do what it needs to do such as deliver blood to a certain area we now have a process called hyperperfusion or we have a process called ischemia uh, ischemia leads to cell death because without the actual blood those cells die because they need it now if your body has a restriction or has a blockage uh, as far as in the arteries do you expect your your blood pressure to just remain the same to just remain the normal blood pressure of 120 over 80 because if there's resistance and that 120 over 80 uh, does not suffice to still uh, get the blood delivered if it cannot overcome that resistance that's in the actual arteries itself then you die overall that's what happens it dies because blood needs to get to where it needs to go if you can't overcome that resistance by increasing the blood pressure which is what your body's doing you're going to go into hyperperfusion the hyperfusion is going to lead to ischemia cell death uh, so your body's not going to let that happen and so it's going to increase and so what the medical system have, has done is said that uh, they used to call it a risk factor but they allowed the term risk factor and disease to be intertwined and intermingled and now we hear high blood pressure, we hear disease, we hear uh, what medications need to be taken with it. Now, once again, you can take the medications the same way you can cut the wire to your check engine light. You can add a quarter oil to it. You can add some antifreeze to it. You can do all those things. But at the end of the day, what do we really do other than just prolong the problem? What do we do other than just kind of ignore the real cause? If you have to add oil to your car, every single month there's a leak that oil is going somewhere it's not just magically disappearing it's going somewhere and it shouldn't be it should you shouldn't be losing oil that fast if your car is always overheating and you're always having to pull over to the side of the road for it to cool down or you got to turn the heater on for it to cool down you can do those things and it'll work for the moment but guess what there's a problem there's still a problem and so at the end of the day hold on real quick y'all at the end of the day, you have to deal with the issue. So high blood pressure, being in, your blood pressure being increased, is not the issue. It denotes the fact that there is an issue and you should actually find out what that issue is and deal with it. High blood sugar, it's not a disease. Your blood sugar being elevated is not the problem. It is the result of the actual problem, which is insulin resistance. We need to find out what's causing the insulin resistance. Nine times out of 10, it's the food. It's the, lack of, it's the food, it's the lack of movement. So once again you can treat these check engine lights you can treat the, the 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 temperature gauge you can treat those things but it's not going to do anything for the overall health of the vehicle you can bring down your sugar with metformin which is going to slow down gluconeogenesis but at the end of the day what does that mean it means that you got to continue to take that medication because if you don't take that medication it's going to come right back and so if i have to keep taking the medication to deal with my cholesterol, to deal with my blood sugar, to deal with my blood, my, my blood pressure, 
What am I really doing? How are these medications actually making me healthier if I have to continue to always take them? They don't. They don't make, make you healthier. All you're doing is adding a quart of oil to your vehicle. All you're doing is adding some water uh, to your actual radiator. But there's a leak in your head gasket. There is a, a, a leak in your engine somewhere. You, you have problems that need to be addressed. And so you're not doing anything for the overall health of the vehicle in those situations. And the same thing can be said for your actual body, for the actual physiology. Don't let them continue to educate you in a way that these signs and symptoms are diseases. They're not diseases. They're signs and symptoms. Cholesterol has a function. Your blood sugar has a function. Your blood pressure has a function. Understand the function of those, those, uh, those systems and you will understand what needs to be done when they are increasing or decreasing. We're supposed to actually understand. You don't medicate, you communicate. You communicate with your body just like it's trying to communicate with you. There is actually a reason why your blood sugar is elevated. And that's because of insulin resistance. Insulin resistance only came to be about because of the foods and also because of the frequency of the eating of the foods. Taking medication to get that blood sugar down does nothing for you as far as uh, mortality and morbidity. They're not going to show you, they're not going to show you not one study where aggressively managing blood sugar with medications has ever improved anybody's health. And if you want, so people always ask for receipts, like I don't have receipts. Look up the advanced study. Look up the Accord study. These are two studies that were done not too long ago where they aggressively treated uh, high blood sugar with medications. And when they aggressively treated high blood sugar with medications, what did they find out? What did they find out? They found out the more aggressive you are with lowering your blood sugar, the higher your death rate will be because of cardiovascular uh, reasons. Because forcing your, in, your, forcing your pancreas to uh, secrete insulin leads to the hardening and the stiffness of the actual arteries, which leads to heart attacks, strokes, the very things that you thought you were taking the medication for in the first place. When you aggressively treat it, you aggressively progress the actual disease. What do they find when they aggressively treat blood pressure with all these medications? Oops, you know, this medication called the diuretic, the, uh, the water pill, it also takes out the uh, potassium, it also takes out magnesium. People start to have full body cramps. Um, also, it, it, when you lose potassium and magnesium at such a fast rate, that also increases your blood pressure. Oops, also hydrochlorothiazide also makes you insulin resistant. Um, oops, metformin also decreases your B12 and your folate, which oops, also increases your homocysteine, which oops, increases your risk of cardiovascular disease. I mean, and this is only happening because you're not, you, 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 we're, we're allowing them to teach us that these signs and symptoms are actually diseases. That's where they always be a, oops, my bad, we didn't know. They knew. I told you with Avandia, how they bodied the case. Like they, they straight up beat the case. They knew well in advance that their medications increased the uh, risk of heart attacks. They knew that well in advance. But if your money long, your game is strong. So I know we over here thinking that, you know, these people have our best interests at hands. They don't. When it comes to the pharmaceutical industries and everything like that, they don't. Your healthcare provider, they very well, they very well may have your best interests at hand. So this is not the, about the actual individual practitioners. This is about the system we call healthcare, about the system we call pharmaceutical industry. These are about the actual systems. The individuals are different, but they operate under the actual protocol of that system whose main objective is to secure the bag. At the end of the day, secure the bag. That's why they can, you can allow medications to come on the market for a couple of years and then have to pull them off the market or put a black, uh, black box label on it because they already knew, but their money was so much, they had so much money to actually push it through regulations, to actually push it through uh, the actual approval, that it's allowed to happen. So at the end of the day, it's about securing the bag for them. So I always tell you, make sure, like, yo, your health belongs to you. This is your health, this is your body, this is your life. At the end of the day, no matter what, no matter what is said, you are in control of all of that. So understand that these things they're calling diseases, such as the high blood pressure, high glucose, uh, high 
cholesterol levels. These things all serve a function. If you don't actually understand the function, you're never going to deal with the actual root of it. So don't treat your diagnostic lights as disease. Find out more about them and actually find, deal with the actual root cause. All right, so I got to get back in here, see more patients. I'm going to holler at y'all later. I appreciate y'all. Peace.